right, this is show number 90, recorded on September 30th. Uh, Tim, I can't believe it's 90. We're going to be hitting 100 before long. Yeah, really, it's flying by. Yeah, and tonight we have um, an, another first, and actually two firsts on the show. We have Mark Johnson coming on the show, Mark's first time on the show. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. And we're going to be covering two topics we've never covered on the show before. One is, uh, and I'll get the name, I, I'm horrible with names, but I got your name right. Mark Johnson's easy. But That's I'm probably, an easy one, yes. I'm probably going to mess up one. Of, I'm probably going to mess up cinema photography. Cinema, cinema graph. <laughs> cinema graph. There, yeah, cinema graph. Which when I show you some of these later guys out in chat, you're going to, uh, they're amazing. And one of them kind of was so amazing, I left it up on my screen for like hours, but it was freaking me out after a while. <laughs> and then the other thing is composites, and you're seeing a lot of the composites. I don't think I have any of this. What was the cinema graph? Any of the cinema graphs up? going through the slideshow, but I have... Sorry, you know, I'll share them. I'll be sure to share okay. some, a few of those, yeah. And I have them here so I can share them manually a little bit, but the, the slideshow, I don't have them in there because I don't, for whatever reason. But the, uh, the, the, the composites I've been playing, which are just amazing. And again, like always, you know, the composites are only as good as, uh, the photos are only as good as what I can display through the stream. What you really have to do is go to uh, Mark's website, and we'll have all that in the show notes. Um, and Tim, he put a few things in chat if you want to pop those into chat. To, okay. He put them in our it. chat if you want to pop them into the show's chat. Yep. Um, that people can see it. We'll put those in the show notes also. Uh, and, and you have to go out there and see that. And Mark has an amazing number of, of uh, videos out on YouTube, too. So just, you know, item after an item of, of you know, walk through different things. I was watching your, one of the recent ones where you're showing an effect where you, like, shifted. It was an image with, with uh, Rogue going into the, the woods with trees on the sh side where you kind of shifted everything. That was amazing just to watch that and the effect you got at the end of it. Hey, Thanks. Mike, yeah. I, don't, I don't have those, uh, those links probably because I re-logged into the... Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll do it. I'll get him ready. Yeah, and while you do that, I'll just jump in with uh, um, yeah. a few comments about my my website. I've I've been um, I've been teaching um, Photoshop for a long time now, and and passionate about it for a lot longer than that. And uh, and, and so my site, uh, which w which will come up in the the show notes here, is um, it it's loaded up at this point with literally hundreds of tutorials, uh, m many of which are free, and. Um, one of which relates specifically to the cinemagraphs that I'll talk about tonight. So, um, yeah, it's content rich. It's a great place to go uh, if you want to learn some new things, but it's also a great place to go if you want to get inspired. Yeah. The, um, okay. So, uh, where do you want to start off with? The cinemagraph? Yeah, I think let's start there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to do uh, a screen what share? To do is, um, I'll share a few of my cinemagraphs that I've, that I've worked on, just a handful. And then, uh, then I'll go into the process of, of actually uh, showing everybody who's watching um, how you can create a cinemagraph of your own uh, using really nothing more than your DSLR that has uh, basic video capabilities. Um, a tripod is highly recommended <laughs> for this. So yeah. you, know, you got your D DSLR, you got your tripod, and then if you have uh, Photoshop, uh, that's all you're going to need to create a cinemagraph. And I'm going to show you how uh, reasonably straightforward the process is, and I also, in the show notes, I'll share with you a link to a um, follow-up video tutorial so that you can um, go back through the steps again later. And let me show, I'm going to show them while we're getting ready for you, I'm going to show them one um, here. So the, I've got the eye pulled up right now, so everybody out in chat can see the eye while you're getting, getting your thing ready. Which, yeah. And I have, I have uh, the, the other three that I think you sent me also. The eye one is just amazing because when you first see it, it it it, it, could, it takes a second or so for it to move, and I think it. She like her eye just moves a tiny bit. And you go, wait, what just happened? <laughs> and then it do, does the whole blink, <laughs> 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 which is just amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, so the idea of a cinemagraph, just for anybody who's tuning in who doesn't know what a cinemagraph is, it's uh, basically you want to think. Imagine a still photograph with uh, a localized or an isolated moving element. Uh, that's what a cinemagraph is. So. It, it, it looks like a still photo, but what kind of surprises you and, and intrigues you is you get these just one element in the scene that is in motion. So uh, anyway, Mike, do you have that to show? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm showing the uh, the eye right now. I just showed the, the lady with the hair blowing, yeah. and yeah. now I've got the lady doing the hand. 
Oh, okay, and so you're actually sharing in a manner where I'm, I can't. Oh, I'm can't, sorry. If you right? were on the, uh, if you'd have to get on the website and see the. I got gotcha. you. See that. Okay. But, so I'm going to have yeah. to describe it to you and sh tell you what I'm yeah. seeing. Is there any? Yeah, those are pretty amazing uh, shots that just showed up in the in the chat. That yeah. the first was the blue eye with it blinking, and then the uh, the girl just standing there with her hair, and and now it's this is actually even even better. Some lady is uh, looks like massaging a hand, and everything is still. I think it's a clay. Hands. It's a clay hand sculpture that she's sculpting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I think one of the secrets to creating a compelling cinemagraph is is to uh, use subtle amounts of motion. Um, I, I think they uh, are more intriguing. Uh, they seem, seem a lot classier if, if you just focus on subtle amounts of, of motion. And one of the tricks to that is, is um, to, to pulling off a cinemagraph is try to think of it as you want a scene where um, two or more things should be moving in the composition. Okay. And then when you turn it into a cinemagraph, you leave one of those elements, one of those things in motion while you freeze anything else that should be moving. And, um, and in order to accomplish that, it's really important that your things that are in motion don't overlap. So you want to, um, you want to keep some separation, some space between the things that are in motion, because otherwise it's pretty difficult to, to mask them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to try. Uh, I don't know if two of us can screen share at the same time. Anyway, I, I might have to just describe to you what's going on because I think my video is getting even worse when I try and do this. Yeah. Well, that's, as long as I know what's up on screen, I'm, I'm good to go. And if you're, if you're sharing those cinemagraphs, that's, that's great. I won't bother sharing those. I'll just, I'll just go straight into showing how to do this. I'll describe to you what we're showing because we're showing the lady now with the uh, – this one, you know, really all four of them that you sent me I, I love – but I like this one too. This one is not creepy at all. Uh, <laughs> it's the lady at the at the uh, sink, who you know she's standing there still, but the water is pouring down into the sink. I mean, in, uh, out of the faucet. You can see the water pouring out of the faucet, and you can see it hitting the the bowl uh, that's yeah. in the sink uh, and and moving the water around in there. So I guess that's your two elements that are moving. Right. You got the moving water, and then you've got the. Yeah, you have the lady. So yeah. You'd expect both of those to move, but all you really see moving. Is the water? Yeah. yeah, incredible. Yeah, this uh, you know, there's a, a individual. Um, I'm trying to think of the name here. It's it's like uh, Jamie. I want to say Davis, but anyway, there's an individual has a blog. Again, this will be in the show notes, but there it's called the Ann Street Studio Blog. I'll have a link to it here, and and um, that blog is where I first got fired up about these. I, I don't know if Jamie, whoever it is, uh. Uh, came up with the idea for cinemagraphs, but whoever this is, this is one of the people who is doing them extraordinarily well. And uh, Jamie does a lot with, uh, you know, creating vintage or classic toning on the okay. images, which imparts just a whole new uh, level of, of magic to them. And in fact, I'll show you how uh, easy it is to, you can tone something, you can color correct it, you can do all the things you could do in Photoshop, even on a cinemagraph. Okay. Yeah, because it, isn't it... Um a still photo? Well, why don't you tell us? What is it? Uh, the cinemagraph, you mean? Yeah. I mean, how are well, you... Well, I mean, you, you actually use your DSLR and you shoot, uh, you shoot moving video. So okay. you just shoot high res, moving video, and, um, and then you bring that into Photoshop and you pull out a still frame, a great still frame from it, and through just a little bit of masking, you, um, you reveal with the mask, with the hole, through the still frame, you reveal the moving element on a layer below. Ah. So let's say this, okay. this picture of the lady with the, uh, the pot in the sink. How long is that actual video? Is it like five seconds that's continuously looped it then? Um, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 I'm really, I shot probably, you know, maybe 30, 60 seconds of video, and then I just pulled out, um, so, you know, somewhere between two, three, and, and ten seconds of that. And okay. then just loop, and then you loop it. And um, creating a seamless loop, that's a, that's a little bit challenging to do. Um, and it's not something that I've perfected or even have necessarily the best method for, but, um, but I'll show you kind of what I do. And, and you can, uh, if, if somebody loves cinemagraphs, they can kind of work out the, the fine details on their own. <laughs> All right. 
Um, so do you want to, um, what do you want to do? you want to show us an example yeah. of one? Sure. Uh, if you, are, uh, you showed the, um, the examples already, so I'll go right into screen sharing, and I'll show you how to ha actually build this thing. Does that okay. sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. All right. So I'm going to dive into my screen sharing here, and uh, since I um, can't see very well, if I, start, if I drop away or anything, or if you guys can't hear me while I'm typing, just, just let me know. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Please. will do. Okay, great. So, um, all right. So I have this movie clip right here. This is the one we're going to work on. I think I think Mike just showed this a moment ago. Uh, but it, it got this movie clip, and um, actually, I'll just play this back through Bridge right now, so you can see uh, see that she's blinking in it, and her head moves some, and her dress is is uh, billowing a little bit right there. And what I want to do is I want to turn this into a cinemagraph where only only thing that you're actually seeing in motion is the hair on the fantastic. on the right side of her face. Okay, so we're going to um, bring this into Photoshop. And um, I'm using Photoshop CC. Uh, you can do this very same thing in Photoshop CS6. You can even do it in Photoshop CS5 and earlier, uh, but I have a different video on my site. If you're using Photoshop CS5 or earlier, then you need to watch my original cinemagraph video. Uh, the one that I'm including a link for tonight is for Photoshop CS6 or Photoshop CC, which is uh, the Creative Cloud. <clears throat> All right. So is everything coming through uh, clearly in terms of audio right now, Mike? Yep, yep. No, you're good. Oh, great. All right. So um, here I am in Photoshop. And the first thing you want to do is uh, make the timeline visible. So all of the panels in Photoshop, they're available under the Window menu. So I'm going to slip right down here to where it says Timeline. And that's going to pop up this timeline. This is where I'm actually going to load the video clip that I shot with the DSLR into Photoshop. And you can do that by clicking right on this little tiny film strip icon that you have right here and choose Add Media. And now I'll go out to the uh, movie file that I captured with the SLR and click Open. And that's going to bring this into, uh, into Photoshop. Okay, and in Photoshop here, you can see uh, this is, it's in what's called a video group. And right now, it's basically, it's just the moving video. That's all that I have in front of me at this moment. So I want to turn this into a cinemagraph. And um, that means that I need to begin the process by finding a pleasing still frame. Now, do you ask your, your um, in this case, this lady uh, who's, who's standing there, and I guess you have a fan blowing her hair, mm -hmm. or do you ask her to stay as still as possible to begin with? I did, yeah. I, I asked her to stay as still as possible um, because if she has radical movement, if her head is bobbing back and forth a lot, yeah, then uh, you're just not going to be able to accomplish this. In fact, the one with the eye that kind of freaked you out, Mike, yeah, um, we had the hardest time getting because that's a macro shot. We're we're right up on her face, right? Um, and getting her to stay still enough um, was extremely difficult. And that's why when you watch the loop on that one, you can see where I. Um, where I actually repeated it because mm -hmm. her head moved just a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, you really do want to think about trying to um, keep things, even though there's motion, try to keep whatever's creating the motion in one spot <laughs> the whole time. You don't want somebody running around the frame. Absolutely. You know, with Halloween coming up in just a couple months, you could think of you know imagine a uh, you know a porch with a flickering jack o' lantern. Yeah. And then there could be something else on that porch that would be that should be in motion. It could be a trick-or-treater knocking on the door or, or whatever, mm -hmm. but the only thing that would actually be moving there is the flickering jack-o'-lantern, you know, something like that. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm going to try to find a pleasing frame, and so I'm just grabbing this little um, handle here that's associated with the timeline, and I'm scrolling through until I come to something that um, looks great and uh, has the hair kind of maybe in a... a, a spot where I like it, so I'm just going to keep moving on through, and you can scrub back and forth. Now I'm going to go with that, that shot right there. Um, that looks good to me. I like the way she looks right now. I like her, her pose, her posture, her uh, facial expression. It's all looking good right there. So um, I'm at this one point. This happens to be 2 seconds, 28 frames into the video, and what I want to do is extract this frame and turn it into a still frame. So I'm going to choose Select All, and then Edit, Copy, 
or actually, you know what, I don't even need to copy. I was about to copy and paste. Forget that. Uh, what you can cho choose is um, basically new layer via copy, which is a command or control J. Mm -hmm. So I made the selection with select all, and now I'm going to do layer, new layer via copy, or command or control J. And that creates this layer right here that is just a picture layer. So it's like I've extracted a photograph from this moving video. And, and what I want to do... And it's based on whatever frame you're on when you did that? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Whatever frame you're on when you do that. That's exactly right. So now um, I want to take this still frame and move it up and out of this video group because while it's in the video group, it's not uh, appearing as a separate still frame. So I can literally just click and drag that layer up and out of the group, and when I see this, it's a really like a squished, very long, narrow, white rectangle. When that appears, if I let go, it deposits the still frame right up on top of the video group. Okay. Now what I can do here is, looking at my timeline, I can see here is my still frame. It's layer one. It's layered itself up on top, and it dropped itself at the end of that video. So I want to bring this over. I'm just dragging it until it's uh, all the way over here at the left-hand side, set against zero seconds. All right, so I've got that there. And um, I'm just for the sake of it, I'm going to go ahead and extend it out a little bit here. There's no harm in dragging that out a little bit longer. All right, now what I want to do here is take part of this still frame and punch a hole through it. And the best way to punch a hole through something or hide something in Photoshop is to add a mask and then paint with black on the mask, and that's going to knock a hole through something. Right. So what I can do um, is make sure the, the uh, still frame layer is active, layer one, and I come down here to the base of the layers panel, and there's this little icon that looks like a front-loading washing machine. So if you click on that, it's going to add a mask to this layer. The mask is the vehicle that allows me to hide part of the layer, what I actually use to punch the hole is the brush tool, and I'll set black as the foreground color down here. You can get to the default colors. If I click on this little tiny icon here, it, it gives me white and black. If I click the exchange or the arrow here, then that exchange is black to the foreground. I want to make sure that I'm using a soft edge brush, so I'll just use this upper left hand choice right here, and that I'm at 100% opacity and flow as I paint. Is this making sense so far, guys? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it this is. This actually seems to be much uh, more doable than I thought it might have been. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really, uh, I think you'll be surprised. Um, there's, it's not a ton of steps. It's, it's and you're doing a great, you're doing a great job of explaining it. I have one issue for me is I don't have a DSLR that shoots video. My, my is a Nikon D700. You know, it's, it's funny that you say that. Neither do I. <laughs> I, um, I get together with a, a photo friend of mine. Yeah. And she has one of these cameras, and we come up with ideas periodically. And I shoot, we shoot it with her camera. So um, I'm with you. I don't have a DSLR uh, uh, camera either, uh, that with, with video that is. But um, okay. don't let it stop you. Find a. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to. That's why you guys got to get a Sony. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, my little plug there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna paint now, right, right now, painting with black paint on the mask. And what I'm doing is I'm I'm uh, revealing. Uh, the motion video from below. And uh, this painting down in through here. And of course, there's no motion video yet. So there's nothing to see yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there will be in just a sec. And I'll show you what I mean. And my mask is probably going to be imperfect to start with, but I'm, I'm painting out extra far because I know her hair swings out a lot. So I'm just going to paint all the way out to here. Right, you know the wall's not changing. Yeah, exactly. There's no motion there, so there's no harm in painting out here at all. That's, that's a very good point. And now I can see where I painted. If I tap the backslash key on the keyboard, I can see exactly where I've painted. And then if I want to turn that off, I hit the backslash key a second time. And another way of doing this is if you hold Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC, you can click on the mask. And it shows you where you painted. So uh, a couple different ways to see where you painted. But the nicest thing to do here is to simply start moving the scrubby slider. And I can see now that her hair is moving. Now I also see her face shifting a little bit in there. Um, so you got a little, looks like she blew a little air into her right cheek. Yeah. And that's just because my mask is not perfect. And um, 
normally I'd take the time, time to perfect it. I probably won't tonight, but sure. I could go back in there and I can perfect it by either painting with more black or I can swap my colors by hitting this little arrow here or tap the X, X key. I can make my brush smaller using the left bracket key. That makes your brush incrementally smaller in Photoshop. In fact, that's the number one keyboard sh shortcut you can learn is left bracket key, smaller brush, right bracket key, incrementally larger brush. And I want to just paint right over her face here. So I'm painting with white now. So I'm just being a little more precise uh, in the painting just for a moment. Again, I'm not after perfection tonight. I just want to get it looking reasonably good. All right, there we go. So i uh, cleaned up the mask a little. Now I can scrub through. And you can see her hair is moving. So now the trick is, um, let me just, I want to actually just play this video for a second. So I'm going to hit the play button here or tap the space bar. Yeah, so you hear there's some audio in there. Audio is not going to bother um, an average person, but while I'm recording the show here, I actually want to come down to this audio track, um, and I want to mute this. Let me let me just see. I can't remember how to. <laughs> <I> don't, <laughs> just don't play don't, any. Just don't play I don't any music. Spend a you lot got of me time banned. muting. Let me let me. I think I click here. Yeah, I click here on the. So this is the um, little triangle associated with the vid actual moving video track. If I click on that, and I click on this icon that looks like a musical note. I can go mute the audio. There we go. And, and now you guys won't have to listen to um, the sound of the fan. You won't have to listen to the sound of my voice encouraging her or letting her know what she can do to um, make it even better. So now what I want to do is I want to find um, a point where her hair kind of right, right around in, let's see if I can just find a spot. Her hair kind of drops down right there. Yeah. And then I'm just going to scroll through and I'm look for another spot where it kind of drops down right there. So I'm looking for spots where the hair is in a pretty similar position. So I'm going to take this. Like right there, our hair is pretty much flopped down. So what I'm going to do is I am going to shorten the video clip here. And it's as easy as this in Photoshop. You grab the end of the clip. See that, that icon I have? Mm -hmm. Drag that in to the point where your playhead is and it snaps. Okay, so now the beginning of my video is that flop down hair moment. Now I'm going to scroll until I can get to another flop down hair moment. And like, I'll say that's it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this end of the video clip and drag that in. And one way to determine how you did, oh, by the way, you're seeing a hole there because my uh, still image layer is longer than my video layer, so I can shorten it just by dragging the still image layer in just like that. All right. Now, one thing you can do here is um, in the flyout menu associated with the timeline, you can go to, um, let's see here, go to first frame, and you can see where her hair is. Then you can come back to the same flyout menu and choose go to last frame. There may be a keyboard shortcut for this, but I don't know. If anybody knows it, please share it. So last frame, there's her hair. So you can, by going to first frame, um, and then to last frame, you can see how close you got to having her hair in the same position. You can see that mine's not perfect. Um, right, and that's going to help when you do the loop. Otherwise, it's going to show that that change. Exactly. So if I weren't demoing this, if I were doing this as a final piece, I would spend some time viewing, scrubbing back and forth through that video clip, trying to find, and, and go, going to the first frame in it and the last frame in it, and trying to find a place where her hair is almost in the same position. If you get it really close, it's going to be almost seamless. So uh, that's what you're shooting for. Here it's it's in the ballpark, but not, not super close, but fine. Right. So um, what I want to do here is um, I'm going to go ahead and loop this. So I'm going to the same flyout menu in the upper right corner of the timeline, and I'm going to say loop playback. And it, I already have it checked from the last time I used this. So that means that when I go to play here by either pressing the play button or pressing the space bar, it's just going to loop through. Now, it might be a little bit herky-jerky when you do this, depending upon the speed of your processor. Um, mine's, mine's actually coming through with a, a reasonable look right now. It's not jerking around too much, but, of course, with Google Plus playback, I have no idea how that's actually It looks looking. fine. Yeah, it looks okay. good. And the other thing you can do is here, um, there's this little gear icon. If you click on this... You can choose the uh, playback resolution. 
So you can improve the resolution if you have a really fast processor by going to 100%. You can reduce the resolution if you have a slow processor to 25%. And it just kind of helps you um, uh, see things the way you want to see them. Mm -hmm. But um, this is looking pretty reasonable right now. But what I want to show you, and this is what's so amazing. All right, so this is now a cinemagraph. It is a moving video, a tiny moving video element in, a, in the midst of a still photograph. But this is Photoshop, right? So yeah. in Photoshop, I can do anything, any creative effect on this that I want. So if I wanted to do some vintage toning, I could go to, say, the um, hue saturation, and I'm just going to do this you know, super fast. I have, I have lots of great videos on my site for creating wonderful vintage toning. I'll do something yeah. fast here. I'll go to a hue saturation adjustment layer, and I'll go to the presets, and I'll choose maybe sepia. And you'll notice that I've now applied sepia tone. Let me play the video back. I've now applied sepia toning to the whole video wow. um, that fast just by applying uh, a hue saturation adjustment layer set to the sepia preset. So pretty awesome. What I really want to do with this image is just color balance it a little bit. So um, I, instead, I drag that, that uh, hue saturation layer down to the trash can, got rid of it. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click on a color balance adjustment layer. And this is all happening in the adjustments panel. Um, you can also get to adjustments, adjustment layers by choosing layer, new adjustment layer, and you'll locate them right in here. But anyway, I like to go right through here. I'll click on the color balance icon. And now I have the opportunity to target the midtones and really balance out the colors for this scene. So you can get beautiful looking cinemagraph. I was about to say beautiful looking video, but a beautiful looking cinemagraph um, just the way you would a still photo. So is yeah. uh, you have all the features, all the functionality, all the filters, and so on and so forth available here in Photoshop that you would uh, have for a still photo. Those are available to the Cinemagraph. I have never thought about uh, editing a video inside of Photoshop, but this now, uh, several people out in chat have been saying now I have a reason to use the video in my DSLR. Can't wait to do this later tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of the comments out there. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. and I, I've just never used the video editing capabilities inside of Photoshop. Have, yeah, are, well, they're 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 actually. Um, I mean, they're not going to be robust like um, a Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, Premiere yeah. Pro or something like that. But for a um, application that was designed to work on still photos, uh, yeah. the video here is actually awesome. In fact, I have a video on my website, two part video on how to create a, um, a beautiful slideshow with music um, in Photoshop using the same timeline that you have right here. I have one on animating things, using the timeline to animate things. So I show how to animate falling snow. Oh, and, um, awesome. Anyway, so yeah, you, these video uh, capabilities are they're a whole lot better uh, than they used to be and a whole lot better than most people actually think they are. So. <laughs> and you can, you can do your own actions. If you had, let's say you have your own actions you either bought or developed yourself, you can run those on, the, on this too? Yes, you can to a degree. You've got to keep in mind that um, anything, w when you're running adjustment layers like what, what I'm doing right now, it's very straightforward. The moment you get into more sophisticated actions or filters, you really have to put on your thinking cap and think about, okay, how am I going to make this work? Mm -hmm. um, because, well, let's put it this way, um, and, and this is not something I do every day, so hopefully I'll put this correctly. Say I wanted to make this into an oil painting. I could run the oil paint filter on my still image layer, and that's, that's very straightforward. If I wanted to apply the oil paint filter to the video, what I would have to do is come to the actual video here, so I'm be on the video clip inside of the layers panel. I have to convert this to a smart object, which means um, once the video clip is active, you can choose filter, convert for smart filters. By converting the video clip to a smart object, you can then apply, an, say, an oil paint filter or a, you know these filters that you see right here to the video clip. I haven't done a lot of that, so yeah. it's it's something where um, somebody may uh, follow my directions here and discover there are some limitations to that. But first thing you need to do to the video clip, if you want to run a filter on it, not an adjustment layer, which is color correction, but a filter, which is something like oil paint or blurring or whatever. Make sure you convert your video clip to a smart object before you start trying to apply the filter. Okay. Yeah. And, and what uh, format are you having to save this in to retain the motion? Is it GIF? 
Um, actually, no, I'm going to save this as a Photoshop document, a PSD, and then when I want to share it with the world, I'll save off a GIF. Okay. So, so PSD is going to be your kind of master file format, and then when you're ready to share it, you're going to go to a GIF, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a sec. Okay. So um, anyway, I was just in color balance here. I, I, don't, I won't go too deep into this, but I can, I can go in. I targeted the midtones and adjusted those. Now I can go to the highlights, and I can adjust the highlights, get those looking just the way I want them looking. Um, just by balancing out the colors here. I have no idea if this actually looks good because I, um, I have a studio light blasting me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, yeah, it looks helping, good. That's not helping with my, uh, <laughs> my eyes here as I color correct this. And I can go into shadows. I can do the same thing here. And uh, so I'll just balance it out a little bit. Okay, so good enough for right now. And uh, I can use the eyeball, the visibility next to color balance here, and I can see before and after. And it looks like I actually did very little. <laughs> but the idea here is you can apply a color adjustment, whether it's toning or just color balancing or uh, brightening and contrast with something like levels or curves. You can do all of that with an adjustment layer at the top of your stack, and it's pretty powerful. So right now, um, Mike, this is based on what you said a moment ago. If I choose File, Save, um, I can save this as, you know, um, Eric. It's got muted because I was typing, but Erica Cinemagraph. Mm -hmm. um, I'll call it Master. So it's Erica Cinemagraph Master. It's a Photoshop file. So I'm saving this as a master Photoshop file with all of my um, layered corrections in it. I'll press save. And this is where you get to share it with the world and see how it goes. So um, in order to do that, what you want to do is first consider the size of it. So um, this is huge. This is a really yeah. big file right now. It's like, I think it's, um, um, what is it, HD, um, I'm just trying to think, what is the, what's the top end? Uh, 1080p. 1080p, yeah. E-video. That's way too big for the web. So if I'm going to go to the web, I might go with something that's more like 800 pixels in the long dimension. So what I'm going to do is come up to the in image menu here and choose image size. And in the image size dialog, I want to um, change the longest dimension to 800 pixels. So that's going to scale it down. Um, if you're working with pixels, you don't really have to th think about resolution, which is pixels per inch. That has to do with printing. Right. All you have to think about if you're working with pixels is how, how many pixels do you actually want it to cover on, on the uh, display that you're working with. So I've got 800 pixels long. I'll press OK. It's saying, hey, if you, wanna, um, if you want to scale or, or change the image size of this video layer, then you've got to convert it to a smart object. No problem. Just go ahead and click Convert and it's going to scale that down. All right, so now this is, this is how big it will display on the web right here, 800 pixels. Okay. Okay. I am ready to save this for the web. So I'm going to go over here to the File menu and choose Save for Web. And in the Save for Web dialog, um, I like to view things. This might take a moment to come up because it's a... It's a it's a big file even though it's 800 pixels. I like to view things as two up, which means up here I'm seeing the original, down here I'm seeing it as a GIF, and this way I can compare the quality of the GIF to the original file. And the reason you want to do that is because over here on the right-hand panel you're going to make sure this is set to GIF, and then you can cycle between perceptual, selective, and adaptive, and you can look to see which one yields the best results. So I'm looking down here, in comparison with what's up here. So perceptual looks pretty great. Let's check out selective, see how that looks. And then in a moment, as soon as it catches up here, we'll check out adaptive. And I'm not really seeing any difference between the three. Are you guys seeing any difference? Not very much. No, it's hard they all to look tell. the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty similar. So there's perce perceptual, selective, and adaptive. And um, when folks who are listening actually work on your own cinemagraphs, uh, just look closely uh, into particularly like continuous tone areas like the sky or something like that, and you'll be able to see subtle differences between these three. Choose the one that looks best. 
And um, otherwise, I'm pretty much going with the defaults that we have in here for GIFs. So transparency is switched on, even though we don't have any. Makes the size smaller somehow. 256 colors. Go ahead, <coughs> since it's going to the web, go ahead and convert it to sRGB. And the most important thing that you do in here, aside from selecting adaptive, selective, or uh, perceptual, the most important thing that you can do here is under looping options, you want to set this to forever. Uh, yeah. Right, so I'm changing my looping looping options to forever. That means it's actually going to save this out as a GIF or an animated GIF that loops. So I'll press save. It has been so long since I've saved a GIF in a uh, Photoshop. Yeah, I don't work with them all that often. I mean, I'm mainly <laughs> working with uh, PSDs and TIFFs and JPEGs, but when I work on cinemagraphs, I'm I'm yeah. going with GIFs, and they're awesome. Yeah, I know somebody. So, uh, before you go on, I know somebody out in chat has asked, uh, um, "Can you post these on? Can you post gifts on Facebook?" I don't think the you answer can. is I, I don't think you can. I mean, unless somebody knows of a means that I I'm not aware of. Yeah, but you, you, to see Marks, he has them on Google Plus, plus maybe you know somewhere else too. But on Google Plus, which actually I think displays photos better than Facebook. Yeah, uh, Google Plus displays displays photos better, and it and it actually allows you to post. Um, uh, cinemagraphs, moving, you know, moving cinemagraphs. Whereas I haven't found a way to do that on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of Google Plus. I love, uh, I love the way they handle um, displaying images and and the, just the whole design of Google Plus for photographers. It's it's yeah. a great platform. So I've got Erica Cinemagraph GIF here. I'm going to hit save. It'll take just a moment. It's going to save this out, and then I'm going to show you how you can um, preview it. So at this point, um, here I am in Bridge. I could be just you know at the Finder level on the Mac, or I could be at the Explorer level on the PC. Doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll find the GIF file, and when I want to see if it's doing what I want it to do, I can Control or right click on that image, either here in Bridge or in the Finder or in Explorer on the PC, and choose Open with and go locate your browser of choice. So I use Chrome. So I'm going to go to Google Chrome, and uh, there it is. It's displaying the way it will actually appear on the web, either you know on your website or in Google Plus or any other platform that allows uh, animated GIFs. Very nice. That's pretty yeah. cool. You yeah. guys, are you guys seeing that? Is it working? Absolutely. Yeah, we're yeah. seeing it. And you just created that tonight as you were talking to us. That's that seems very doable steps. Yeah. It's. I think it is totally doable. This is. Uh, this is something that is available to any person who has a DSLR with video, a tripod, and Photoshop. Um, in terms of the actual technical skills needed, watch. You know, rewatch this program. Um, watch my video where where I've got a free link associated with tonight's program. And um, I think. I think it, it's it's available to anybody who's excited about this. Yeah. And we'll have all those uh, I links. I think the hardest part is probably just coming up with the ideas of what to do. Right, right. Don't overdo the motion, I think, is the key. Exactly. You know, those are both great comments because really, um, for me, I'll sometimes just sit down and I'll kind of have a brainstorming session. And also, go to that Ann Street Studio uh, blog, and that will give you a lot of inspiring ideas. But, um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, coming up with the ideas is one of the tr that's one of the trickiest things. But if, you, uh, if you, you're committed to it, I guarantee the ideas will come and you'll have a ball. So are there any questions that are coming in through chat or from you two just about the general process before we go into um, phase two here or talk about some, um, I'm posting, some composites? Hold on one second. I'm posting all these links now in the chat. Okay. Great. And then I'll have them again out in the, um, like all right. I said in the show notes. Uh, so, you know, there's been not, not so many questions. I think I hit them as we're going, but just, you know, people comments, you know, cool and that kind of stuff. Um, and what I can't wait, what I look forward to is guys, out, you know, if you're a member of our Facebook group, go out there. And if you do one of these, then, you know, share it with us. Although you can't post it directly on Facebook, we think, you know, if you have a Google Plus account, you can post it there and then you can um, share the link with us to do that. All right, so that, well, we got to get moving. <laughs> Just looked at the clock. Yeah. That was a great walkthrough, Mark. Uh, I don't know, you know, this is going to mean we're going to have to have you back some other time because the composites that we showed as slideshows 
early on for everybody. You know, that was just, we just showed them. Now we, you, you're going to talk a little bit about composites, but we're barely going to be able to touch the surface on composites. Yeah, well, I'd be, uh, you know, I'd be happy to come back sometime and just show folks how to, how to create a composite. Um, we, we could do a separate show completely dedicated to that, because you're right, that requires, that requires a little bit of time to do. But um, mm -hmm. one comment I have around that, for those who are seeing these composites and hearing what we have to say tonight, and they're just getting fired up, yeah. Again, on my website, um, if you search composite, you're going to find several free videos relating to how to composite, you know, how to make difficult selections like hair and things like that. And also, and this will be a link that uh, I think Mike is going to post, but um, in my bookstore, I have uh, some premium video tutorial series, and one of them is on dramatic portrait compositing. So it is a series that's dedicated just to compositing, and I sell it for, uh, I think, $24.95. It covers the whole process, beginning to end, including, you know, how you light up, how you light the model, you know, what sort of backdrop you use, and I try to make it again something that's accessible to anybody. You don't have to have thousands of dollars of gear or anything like that to create great composites. Uh, you just need a pretty basic setup and um, uh, some imagination. <laughs> And uh, and off you go. You have a great time. I have your web page pulled up now, I'm, I'm so people out in chat can see the you know the web page. Thank you. Um, and we'll have, of course, all those those links. And, you know, the photos I'm about to show, and we probably should just pick one and talk about that one, because um, we were, you know, streaming them. The photos, again, are, you're only going to see the quality that I can stream. The, the see the true quality is you got to go to Mark's website. Yeah, my, my site and my Google Plus stream, yeah. uh, those are the two places where I, where I show, you know, all the creative things that I'm, I'm having a good time with. Yeah, and, and like you mentioned, you do... You know, I'm looking at the the, um, the premium videos now. You have a lot of, of free stuff on YouTube, and then your premium videos are not that expensive. And look at where they're all around twenty. Look like the highest priced one, twenty four ninety five. That's yeah. very reasonable. And what you're about to see is, you know, um, the incredible composites that Mark does. Or have you, you been seeing that? So, Mark, do you want to pick one of the photos? You know that you have. Sure, I'm happy to pick one, or if there's something that kind of struck your fancy and you'd like to talk for, about. That's going to be okay. hard for me because there's a, there, I, I'm looking at them now. And, guys, you get, if you're watching early, you saw them going through as, as, in a slideshow. I'm going to have a hard time picking one because I see it would be easier for me to tell you which ones I wouldn't want to talk about. <laughs> well, how about, how about I go in there and I'll just start talking about one or two or three of them, and, okay. and we'll just if, if you guys think that's not one that the audience would be that excited about, then just let me know and and we'll move on to something else. Okay. So I'll go back to sharing my screen here and and we'll uh we'll just take a peek. Okay. So uh, plus there we go. Photo composites. All right. So um. Yeah. And um, I'm probably not going to start with that one because that gets a little more, a little more sophisticated. I'm actually going to start with one that's kind of more, um, just more straightforward, and uh, talk a little bit about that. So I'll go to something maybe like this. Uh, okay. uh, first thing I want to mention is that um, when, whenever possible, I like to capture my own model and my own background and things like that. But the truth of the matter is, you know, I am a, um, a full-time photography and Photoshop teacher. And uh, I have a five and a half year old daughter, and so there are a lot of a lot of times when I want to composite, but I don't have time to go out and hire a model and get a makeup artist and set up my lights in the studio and 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 do all of it. And so uh, I want to encourage everybody, you know, if if that's your thing and you want to create the composite from start to finish, go for it. It's awesome. But um, one thing that I turn to now, and I'm so glad I gave myself permission to do this, is when I want to make some composites and I don't have time to hire the model and set up the studio and do all of that, um, I am more than happy to uh, go out to a site like Shutterstock.com or iStock Photo and purchase um, some stock images of, say, a person who was photographed in front of a white screen or a gray screen, and then a background um, and you know whatever elements that that I need. Um, I, I sometimes grab them from stock. Sometimes I shoot them myself. My goal is just to stay creative and keep compositing. And so for me, trying to own the whole process and do my full-time job, it's, it's not all that easy. So mm -hmm. uh, I've created a situation where I get to be creative by allowing myself to, uh, to purchase images from others to build into my composites. 
So uh, this is an example of, of just that. You know, I did not photograph this particular model, um, nor did I grab that background. But through the creative process of compositing, I was able to uh, integrate the two so that they looked like they were photographed in the same location. And that is the idea here. You want to um, integrate. And I'm going to show you a few more examples here, and then I'm going to explain some of the techniques not going to go into great detail. We'll do that maybe on another show, or like I say, the resources are available on my, on my site. But I'm going to at least talk about some of the tricks to integrating. So um, here's another one. This is one where I, sh I did shoot the background. In fact, uh, I shot that background at, at Disney. I know that was a topic of conversation before the show got started. Shot that background at Disney. <clears throat> shot the model in front of a um, uh, white screen, uh, which is this, what I use for all of my models. Yeah, um, that one definitely looks like, you know, she is there. Yeah. Well, and the whole idea here is anytime, you know, this is, again, these are, these are, that's a whole series of stock images that I use there. Um, oh, the sports one, I, they did, uh, there was a comment out there that they would love to see us, uh, you talk about a sports one, which would be this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see, we'll see if we get some time on that one. <laughs> I would love to talk about it. And so, um, you know, and you'll notice that in each case, uh, I'm, if I was successful, um, I made it look like the model was there. And when you look at something like this, um, part of what accomplishes that is, first of all, uh, making a really tight selection mm -hmm. around the model. And um, in my dramatic portrait compositing series and uh, a little bit in some of the free videos on my site, I, t I show how to make selections of really difficult things like flowing hair because that can be tricky. Yeah. But the good news is, even though it's tricky, if you know some of the strategies, it's, it's a lot easier than, than you might think. It's sort of like the cinemagraphs. It's surprisingly easy once you know the strategies. So a tight selection is a really big deal. Um, the other thing that really matters here is that you balance the color, the brightness, the contrast, and the saturation of the model, whatever that model might be, in this case it's a dancer, with the background that you're dropping the model into. So by using some adjustment layers like color balance and curves and hue saturation um, and clipping those adjustment layers into the model which has been extracted, um, clipping those layers in, you can then balance the color of the model so it better suits or better matches the background. Looking at this one another moment here, um, what the other things that make it or, or one of the things that makes it so dramatic and exciting is that little bit of light bursting in from the upper right corner there. And um, when I composite, one of the things that I really try to do is create drama through light. And as, as many of you know, who, who sh are shooters, who are photographers, you know that it's really um, difficult to photograph a real model in front of, say, a sunset or a bright background. Have you guys encountered that? What, ha what mm -hmm. happens in that situation, Mike? What do you think? <laughs> well, uh, what was that again? Sorry. Well, when you're, when you're photographing your, your model in front of a, a bright background, what, what tends to happen to the model? You're they, either going uh, to blow her out or you're going to um, have her dark. Yeah, well, generally what happens is you get great exposure on mm -hmm. that background, right? And then I mean, so the blow, model yeah, blow out the background or make her dark, yeah. In, into a silhouette, yeah. Right, right. And so compositing gives you the ability to balance the light so that you have awesome light you know, on the front of the model and dramatic light coming in from the back. And so I work a lot with bringing dramatic light in. And in line with the dramatic light, you, you want to work with, if you're showing the feet of the model, you want to work with the shadow that's yeah. coming off of the model. And so, you know, between the selection, the color balancing, the dramatic light and the shadow, those are four elements that are really a big deal for uh, creating a believable composite. I try to create composites that maybe aren't realistic. You know, they might be something from a, a fantasy world, but I want them to look believable or convincing. And so um, I'll just show a few more examples here. You know, here, here again, you can see the light. Having the sunlight... Um, right back here, which, you know, this is light that I added, having that actually create a little bit of discolor, discolorization, and mm -hmm. I, I hope I said that right, yeah, in, the, yeah. uh, in the edge of the model here, that helps sell it um, by creating that little bit of light. And there's a real simple technique for accomplishing that. Uh, here's another one where... Um, so you yeah. added that sun into that picture? That uh -huh. wasn't there? Yeah, that's right. I added the sun. I wouldn't, added. Even, wouldn't even have known it. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. The sun itself you added? 
Yeah, the, so I added the sun, I added the birds. Um, <laughs> basically, you know, you have the uh, you have the Taj Mahal background there, which is yeah. a stock image. You got this beautiful Indian lady here, which is a stock image. Uh, those are the two stock elements, and then I used actually a set of custom brushes that are free from ObsidianDawn.com for the um, to create the birds. And then I added the sun, and you could do that um, right there in Photoshop, or if you want to take it to the to the top end. <laughs> There's a plug-in called Knoll Light Factory for Photoshop. I tell you, would never would have guessed that. I would have thought mm -hmm. that was part of the original picture. Yeah. 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 Um, a lot of times when you see the light streaming in from behind, uh, it's not part of the original picture. Like uh, here, you know, you see the lens flare coming across this guy. That I used Knoll Light Factory. I added this light up here because this is not. It doesn't actually have that light. And I use no light factory to create this beautiful lens flare. There's also a way to do this in Photoshop. It's just not quite as sophisticated, but I have a free tutorial on how to do it. And um, by having the lens, the, the light shining from the back and the lens flare coming across the model, um, again, that ties the two together. That's what's convincing. On this one, um, I added a little bit of additional light on the uh, face of the model and right here. So I, there's a little yellow light right there. There's some yellow light that's overlapping in this region here. Um, all of that is um, playing with the light is a way to try and uh, convince people that these things belong together. You know here, what? I re really uh, this, this light back here, I accentuated. There was already golden light in the sky, but I accentuated it and I wrapped it around the edge of the model in a really powerful way, so that it looks like the light is literally just wrapping around the edge of the model, and that there's an intense uh, bit of dramatic lighting behind her. I'll show you a few more examples of that. Um, here's another case. Same model we worked with for the Cinemagraph. Um, just some light wrapping in in front of her. I like your editing of the photo itself, the, you know, the, the almost the HDR quality that there is to the photo. Yeah, uh, yeah. Outside of just even the composite, but the HDR quality to it, I just, I, yeah, I love that quality. Yeah, yeah well, in, in some cases, like, um, let me find a few quick examples here. In some cases, um, the swimmer, I, I actually, love the swimmer. I actually bracket the background um, exposures, like in this one, mm -hmm. and in and in this one, I bracketed those, and those are actually HDR backgrounds. Here's another example, HDR. Oh, I background. love that one. Yeah. Um, HDR background. So I shot all these as HDRs and gave them the intense treatment that they have. Uh, here's another one. Uh, she was shot right here in Boulder, Colorado. The background was shot in Italy, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, but but in, in so other instances, where I use a stock image like this, the background looks like HDR, but it was a single image, stock image, and so it's not actually HDR. I used um, a technique, and again, there's a free video on my site for this, where I talk about how to create edginess, um, uh, how to create grunge, grungy drama, or something like that is is what I called it. It's a recent video that I posted within the past month or so, how to create that look in a photo even when you didn't shoot an HDR. You know, mm. that gives you the opportunity to create that look. Uh, I had another comment. I was coming down into... Uh, and you have, if I remember right, you have some, somewhere close to 300 videos that people can I go have, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've recorded um, Quite uh, a four, about 400 uh, Photoshop Workbench tutorials now and probably about 250 of those are currently available on my site for free. Um, and uh, all of them can be purchased uh, as DVDs, so you can actually own all those videos, um, all 400 of them. Uh, you can get them right from my bookstore. Okay. Now, uh, oh, here's here. This is where I want. Oh, the fireman. Oh. So, okay. Right. So, like, with something like this, um, I, I, I did shoot him. Um, uh, well, no, I shot him as a single image. Gave him kind of the HDR look uh, with mm -hmm. the edginess, the grunge technique that I talk about in the video that's on my site because uh, I really wanted to pop out all the detail and the texture in him because that's what this scene is about. The background here, which looks like you know fire and smoke, this is actually generated out of a program called FilterForge. It's something that I... Uh, Holy crap. Um, I've got videos on yeah. FilterForge on my site. I have it in my discounts page. I, um, I have a 50% off FilterForge uh, discount code on my page. FilterForge generated this background as well. That, so and, I shared with people at work two photos, and this was one of them today. Yeah. Uh, that that one is just incredible. The one with the smoke, 
That uh, that looks like real smoke to me. I, I thought you yeah, maybe I you just added real. smoke from some other shot. Yeah, and same here. I mean, the smoke in the background there. Oh my gosh. Um, all three of these, the background elements are created in FilterForge, so they're literally generated out of this program that creates. That, uh, that's an amazing shot there. Spectacular backgrounds, and then you know, it, when in compositing, you know, per every composite I work on, you know, you, you try very hard to create a an accurate selection. You try to color balance your subject with the background. Um, in this case, I wanted to add dimensionality to the scene, so I had him in there. I had the smoke and fire behind him, but um, I wanted more dimensionality, so I thought, well, you know, why not add in some real smoke in the foreground? So I went out to, I think it was a cgtextures.com. It's a free texture site, and um, I downloaded a, a free bit of smoke. It was just white smoke on a black background. Drop that in, and using, um, I think it's multipliers at screen. I think it's multiply blend mode. It just drops the black part out of it and it leaves behind the smoke. And then you can just scale it and transform it and rotate it until it looks the way you want it to look. Uh, same thing here. You know, those flames that are in front of the subject, uh, those are a stock photo um, or, a, or a, you know, a stock texture that I downloaded and composited. And even the sparks that you see, there, there are little bits of, of sparks flying up there, stock photo. And to give those a little bit of extra drama, like you see in a movie poster, I use the warp command in Photoshop and warp those. Um, I, I've got a video on my site about working with particles, and um, that's exactly what I did on those, those sparks that you're seeing. And all of those little considerations um, help make the composite stronger. And um, anybody who's interested in compositing, one thing I want to say is, as you get started with this, you know, go easy on yourself because there's there's a, it's not a super steep learning curve, but there's definitely a you know a reasonable learning curve, and only through just enjoyment and practice on it are you going to get better and better with the composites. So it's not something where I mean, like I feel like I have a million miles to go. I still have a lot I want to learn about compositing, but I'm just loving the process. So it's not really about, um, it's not really about going out and creating. a great composite, you know, when you first get started. It's about learning the techniques, having fun, and starting to um, gather this inventory of skills that you need in order to make um, compelling composites. And then you, you'll reach a point where your imagination can run wild and you can create, you know, anything that you want. You know, I've got, uh, you know, this is my <laughs> tribute, tribute to the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> um, here I've got, uh, you know, this I've got a. Well, you know, talk about mixing genres. Looks here. like uh, this liquid is is Jack yeah, is liquefying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got a uh, basically like a, a a drawing of a ghost town, which um, is a stock image. You know, I just thought I thought that is a great image. I want it. So it's a drawing of a ghost town. Then I've got a da dancer leaping into the air, and then the splashes of paint. Those are stock images too. I went and I, I, I searched for paint splashes. I have a video on my site for how to do this as well. You know, create a paint splash effect. But um, you know, then I integrated the paint splashes and I color corrected them so they matched his his turquoise jacket. Right. Yeah. And you know, and it, to me, it kind of feels like he's got wings. That was that was the idea. But I wanted it to look. I wanted to have all this sort of dripping with uh, with ambiance and and <laughs> I don't know. It's oh and. And sorry, guys, I, talk, I tend to get talking fast when I get excited. So if you want to get a word in, <laughs> just well, say, Mark, s slow down. <laughs> well, and, and I hate to bring this word up, but we are up on the hour now. And okay. I, I, know and I you... definitely want, I, Mike, we got to get him back so that yeah, we're gonna have to get we you can back learn and... how to do the composites because so, this is amazing. So let me ask you a question. On the firemen one specifically, the, the, the three firemen that ones you showed us, um, do you have any videos that are related to to those specific images? Absolutely. I, I, I have um I have a video that talks about how to create fire okay. um, in Photoshop. Um, or actually, no, I'm not sure if I have one on fire. I know I have one on either smoke or fire. Okay. Uh, smoke or fire. And then I have another one on rain, the rain effect right here. I, I show I created that rain from scratch in Photoshop. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That, and, that... and the splash is coming off of his jacket and his hat. Those are stock images. So when you see the splashes, those are stock photos. But the actual rain that's falling, that's that's literally created from scratch, right, right inside of Photoshop. And so I show how to create the rain effect, and I also show how to create um, either smoke or fire. Um, and uh, and as I say, I've got got some other free videos on 
you know, creating creating selections and things like that. And if it, if somebody's looking to tie it all together, that portrait compositing series, it brings it all together. It doesn't. It does not address specific things like uh, <laughs> like rain and smoke and fire, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Mark, I know you you have a, a young daughter you want to see go to bed, and I yeah. I really I really appreciate you coming out tonight and walking us through uh, the summer graphs, which you know I now want to get a DSLR with video, um, and also you know spending some time with, on your composites, which are just amazing. You know, I look looking through those, it was hard for me to pick one for you to for you to talk about because I kept sharing them with my friends at work, saying, "This is the guy we have coming on tonight or next week or whatever it was." <laughs> look at this one, and, and the funny thing was, I showed the fireman to somebody today, the fireman with the, what that was, that was had a lot of fire around him, and I also showed the the with the baseball player, and um, you know everybody has the same has the same thing to say is, "Wow, you know that's amazing." Yeah, um, it's it, to me the the real joy in it is just. Um, being able to, you know, I, I found that as much as I love a camera, I can't really convey everything that I'm imagining with just my camera. So, yeah. so I, I take my camera and Photoshop and bring them together, and um, and using both of those tools, and then sometimes res resorting to stock images, I can finally, you know, tell the little stories that I want with these still images. And so that's the exciting part for me is just a, it's like a, an opportunity to be able to express yourself that you don't have without these tools right yeah well just amazing mark thank you for coming out we'll have to schedule you to come back out again and spend some more time on the composites because uh, that's a subject that you know i'd love to spend some more time on it's something that i'm very bad at you know looking at your work that's the thing tim is when i have people on like mark it just makes me more um realize how limited my skills are yeah, really. yeah but you, you know don't, you I, wouldn't look both. At, I wouldn't look at it that way in other words it, it's just an opportunity for growth you that's know? true it's, that is true it's an opportunity to figure out what you love and then just work at it some you know put your passion and your persistence into it and make great stuff well and the other thing it does it gives me a lot of ideas you know looking at at, at, at work gives me a lot of ideas and something to strive for um, yeah and even if you don't get as good as mark the process is is still is still fun Maybe, oh, frust maybe frustrating at times, but still fun. All right, Mark, well, thank you for coming out, and we'll let you get to your daughter, and um, we'll uh, be in touch. Okay, well, thanks so much for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Guys out in chat, um, hold on one minute. We'll, um, let's go ahead and we'll end the live show. I forgot my, my saying here, Tim. Uh, until next week, keep it raw. Keep it raw.